may be seated. Thank you so much for being here today. Your presence is a comfort to this family. And they're very grateful for every one of you investing a little bit of your time in them in their hour of sorrow. If you would take just a moment and make sure that all of your cell phones are in some way silenced, whether that's turning it off or turning it down, whatever you need to do, because we wouldn't want our time to be interrupted today. And then let's bow our hearts and our heads and let's ask the Lord to be with us. Lord, we, we cannot honestly be grateful for times like this because our hearts are heavy. There's an emptiness there that we're not sure will ever be filled. But you have promised us that you could fill every empty area of our lives with your presence. And so I pray that your Holy Spirit would come today. I pray that the memory of Fran will be honored. I pray that the, the revelation of Christ will be portrayed as we look at her life, but more so as we look to the hope of the resurrection that in you is sure and certain. And may Jesus be lifted up as our prayer today in your holy name. Amen. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see. My name is Chris Criswell. I'm one of the pastors here at Praise Cathedral. And if it's all right with you, I would like to begin this morning by reading a couple of verses of scriptures from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. 
Paul says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. It is our prayer for you this morning that you receive the, the precious comfort that the Lord offers to you right now. You love Sister Fran well. You took care of her well. You did all that you could do to lovingly honor her life and care for her and her illness. And we grieve with you this loss, but we grieve for us because we know that Fran is not here. As a matter of fact, if we were to see where she was at right now, I think we'd be jealous of her. But we consider, as we consider today where she's at, we remember who she was here on this earth. I was told that she was a, an outdoorsy person. She liked to be outside working, liked to see things grow. And it's that love who defined who she was because she loved the outdoors. She loved her family very much, loved her church, and she loved her God. And that's why we know that right now she's experiencing a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Now, family, I know these last few months, these last few years have not been easy for you. But I'd like to offer you a point of view on what you have experienced. You see, sometimes death is compared to birth. Because there's a few similarities sometimes that we don't think about. You see, a baby, while still in the wound, is happy where it's at. It enjoys its nourishment from its mother. And as far as it's know, it knows, its whole reality is wrapped up there in the wound. But in order for that child to grow, it must go through a birthing process. And this process is not easy. Any mother will tell you it's painful. It's messy. It can be complicated. But if that child is to grow into who God created that child to be, they must be birthed. And it's scary. And for that child, they're entering into a new reality with a lot of unknowns. In a similar way, in death, we don't necessarily want to leave this life because it's all we've ever known. This reality is what we're comfortable with. This is what we know. We're, we're good. But in order for us to attain the fullness of who God created us to be, there's a different kind of birth. And there's an exiting of one reality and it's awake, awakening in a new reality and it's difficult, it's painful, it hurts, it's messy and oftentimes it's complicated. But brothers and sisters, I tell you right now that even though she closed her eyes and drew her breath for the very last time here on this earth, that was not the end of her story. It was just the turning of a chapter. As her eyes opened up in a brand new reality. A reality that is full of glory. And I know that her one desire now as she is in the presence of her Lord and Savior is this. I can't wait for y'all to be there. There's a phrase that we use in the church world whenever the church invites all of its past congregants to come back home and they say, we're going to have what's called a homecoming. And where I grew up, we'd have a big feast. Everybody cooked something and people you ain't seen in a long time would come in and you'd celebrate and you'd sing and glory to God, we'd eat. Well, family, there's a homecoming waiting for y'all. And I know she's got a table spread waiting for y'all. And when you get to this other side of glory, I know that you're going to see Jesus. But I know somebody else is going to be eager to get her arms around your neck. So with that being said, I'd like to close out my time with a couple more verses from Revelation chapter 7, verses 16 and 17. And let this be a comfort for you as you know where she's at today. It says, never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat, which will be good as she works that garden in heaven. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Let me pray for you this morning. Heavenly Father, 
I ask that you send your comforter this morning. I know you've been with this family through this process. And you've been with them this morning because we know this is a hard morning for them. But Holy Spirit, I ask you to wrap every single one of them up in your arms of love and carry them this day. That Lord, today, even though they say goodbye, we know that there's a hello coming. But Lord, I pray that you will continue to fertilize the garden of their hearts for every lesson and seed of love that Sister Fran planted and every heart touched here today, that it would be fertilized and produce great fruit. So we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the hope and promise we have in you and knowing that you have Sister Fran carry this family now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. to say amen I know from a Baptist background that's unusual but thank you again for being here I want to commend this family for your care and compassion for Fran and a lot of people don't know 
what you have done, not just the past few weeks and months, but even into years, how you have taken care of her. Have you has shown her your love? I'm reminded of the fact that when Jesus was dying on the cross, he seemingly stopped the crucifixion for a moment. Here he is hanging, being crucified for the sins of the world, but there comes this moment that he just almost stops everything and looks at one of his apostles and says, take care of my mother. John, this is my mother. Take care of her. And I would submit to you that you have done more Christ-like activity in taking care of Fran than maybe anybody would understand or comprehend. And you are to be commended for that today. I want to put my knowledge of Fran in a proper context, if you don't mind. And that context starts with Pat, because I knew Fran through Pat. When he married Fran, she became a part of not just his family, but our church family. And, and so here you have Pat, quiet, gentle Pat. Steady as she goes, you know, slow and steady wins the race, always calm, always even killed, Pat. And into that life comes Fran. Wide open, Fran. Bubbly overflowing, full speed ahead, climb every mountain, conquer every conquest, back away from nothing, attack the world with a smile on your face, Fran. And I thought, this is going to be interesting. And what a great life you guys have had. In, in some ways, polar opposites, and yet in many ways, perfect for each other. Fran loved to cut grass. Pat loved to let Fran cut grass. It worked out really well. She loved to tell him what to do. He loved to do what she told him to do. And they've had a great time. Fran was the daughter of a Baptist minister, which meant she loved people whether she wanted to or not. What Fran loved to do was help people. To demonstrate the love of Christ in their life, she embraced the challenges of helping others. So much so that Fran became a woman Republican county council in Oconee County. Now that's a miracle right there. I, I grew up in Pickens County and it was kind of backward. Oconee is more backward. A, a, a female Republican. Now I know nationally they will go Republican every time, but in local elections, the good old boys hold the seats in that part of the country. And here comes Fran. And I doubt she had a lot of good old boys supporting her. But nobody could deny her passion and her heart and the way she could connect to people. And when she looked at people and said, I want to do this to help you, she meant it. And they knew she meant it. Fran especially loved helping children. Her heart was for children. She worked for many years at the Tomasi DAR school. Now, there's a lot of people here who have no clue what that is. I know what that is. I run around on those grounds. We had members of our church in Six Mile who, who worked at the DAR school, and I would go stay at their house. They lived on the property, and, and I know what that place is. 
And if you're a kid, it's a lot of fun. If you're an adult, it's not a lot of fun because you have to work with kids who at times are unruly, so to speak. It's not a place you volunteer. Fran did. She worked there for years. And she didn't just punch the clock and show up. She helped start new programs. She started a child care program there. She, she wasn't afraid of tough challenges. She lived her life seemingly with no fear. How brave was she? She wanted 12 kids of her own. 12. And the Lord saw fit to bring two into her life that she poured her heart into endlessly. And then the grands and grandchildren are much better than your own children, but that's another story for another day. Fran lived by the proverb 22 and 6. Train a child up in the way they should go. When they're old, they'll not depart from it. What I love about that proverb is it doesn't say that there won't be seasons that they won't drift. But what it says is, there'll come a point in their life when they will remember what you put in them when they were small. And that's what they'll cling to. For me, I was always struck by the expression of joy that was on Fran's face, regardless of what she was going through. Regardless of what she was enduring, she always had this smile. And it wasn't a facial smile. You know, some people give you that facial smile and you know they're just exercising muscles. When Fran smiled, it came from right here. It was a joy that was deep in her heart and deep in her soul. Because the one who was living deep in her heart was the source of her joy. And that was Jesus Christ. And so I sat and thought in prayer last night, if Fran, in this fallen, broken world, filled with so many challenges and so much difficulty, if Fran could live in that world and still be filled with such joy, then how much more must her joy be complete today in that perfect world that God has created for her? If she could enjoy this life with everything that we all have to go through, how much more must her joy be exuding today in that place where John said there's no more pain and there's no more suffering and there's no more tears, and there's no more sorrow, and there is no more death because all of these things have passed away. If she could have the joy she had here, I can't even begin to imagine what she's experiencing there. The Apostle Paul said it like this in Romans chapter 8. He said, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. What's he saying? Well, for Fran, he would be saying this. The past few years have been marked by increased difficulty. More and more, her life became a struggle. And you know it because you walk through it with her. But Paul would say, all of that suffering isn't worthy to be mentioned now because of the glory that she's experiencing. If you could speak with her, you might say, Fran or mom or grandma, and you might try to express again how you hate the difficulty she had, and she would stop you very quickly and say, that's over. And that's not worthy to be mentioned. Let me tell you how wonderful heaven is. 
The Apostle Paul said one other thing in closing today. He wrote to the church in Philippians and he asked them to consider one thing. Philippians is a chapter, is a letter about joy. He calls on them more than once to rejoice in the Lord. Even saying rejoice in the Lord always. But he personally speaks to them and here's what he says. I would like for you to fulfill my joy. He looks at them asking them to help complete his joy. Fulfill my joy, he said, by being like-minded. And of one accord and of one mind. What, what, would, what like-mindedness and one accord would Fran call you to today? It would be to love Jesus like she loved Jesus. Fulfill my joy and be like-minded with me in my love for Christ. Be like-minded with me in my pursuit of him. Be like-minded with me in your Christian care for one another and your love for one another. If you want to fulfill my joy, what you've seen me live, live it. And then the joy you saw in me will be completed and fulfilled in you. Pastor Chris mentioned homecoming. I probably went to a few homecomings at the Cherry Hill Church of God which meant the food was really good. And they probably had fresh squeezed lemonade with a little bit of sugar because we didn't use sweetener in that part of the country. Those were such joyful times. But it doesn't compare to the joy that awaits us. And Fran will be looking for every one of you fulfill her joy and follow Jesus Christ as she did. Let's pray. We are again grateful today, Father, for such a life that's been lived among us and the impact that will stay with us for the rest of our lives. And Lord, we're glad this is not the end. If... if if, if in this life only we have Christ, your word says we're of all men most pitiful. No, no, no. It's not just Jesus for this life. It's Jesus for eternal life. And Fran has stepped into that eternal existence today. I pray that this family will be marked by her joy. And will pursue her joy being the reality of their lives in their relationship with Jesus Christ. There will be days ahead that will be different for them. May they find your strength sufficient. There will be days ahead that will seem dark. May they find your light illuminating. There will be days ahead that they'll face emptiness. May they find your presence to be enough to sustain them until they see her and see you forever. In Christ's name. We're going to make our way to Hillcrest Memorial Gardens, Highway 29. There will not be a procession. You're asked to obey all traffic laws. Pastor Tommy Harvey will be taking care of the graveside committal there. If everyone except for the family would stand at this time, please.